What's up, you guys? It's Jono! Welcome to another episode of my Pokemon Legends Arceus Request series. Today we're on request number 22, where you're going to meet Vesa, who has a very strange and very long request for you. In fact, this is the hardest and longest request in the entire game. It took me over two hours to complete this request. I only have an hour worth of footage here, and that's still a ton of footage. So just settle in because this is a long one, but don't worry, your boy Jono has got your back. I'm gonna give you a full walkthrough for this entire request. We're going to get all 107 wisps and they can be found in order, basically going from point to point across the map. That's why it's such a long video, but I cut out all of the stuff that I could possibly cut out and still show where the wisps are located. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to show a map at the beginning of each and every area. And also keep in mind that that odd keystone that you just got from Vesa, that goes into your key items and you can check how many wisps you have at any point in the game. The only way you could possibly get stuck on this request is if you only had one wisp in one area left and you just couldn't figure out which wisp it was. I'm sorry if you're in that situation, it's just a dire situation. Most people won't be in that situation. Hopefully you have not gotten any wisps whatsoever and I highly recommend to start this wisp request at no wisps. Start it off at zero wisps aside from the one wisp which you will get right here. You have to get that one. You can't get through this encounter without getting it. And it's worth mentioning that everybody gets this encounter. It happens right after Cleavor. Once you get back from Cleavor, when you enter Jubilee Village, it will be night and you cannot skip this request. Everybody gets this request. So don't worry if you think you don't have it and you're trying to figure out where do I unlock it. You actually do have it as long as you've already crossed over Cleavor and gotten past that first boss. So there you go, you guys, you have the request. You have one wisp to start the request, and then they set you on your merry way. Now, a lot of you guys are probably going to grab a couple of wisps here and there as you encounter them because they do run you across them throughout the story, such as the one that's in the stone quarry. Very hard to miss that wisp. Well, I don't recommend to grab those wisps because later on you'll be like, wait, did I get that one? I don't remember if I got that one. So I recommend to skip all the wisps until you actually get to when you want to do all of them in one go, which is what I did here. Now I did try it the other way where I just picked up a few here and there on my main account. And I can tell you it took me nearly an entire day to do this because of the confusion of not knowing which wisp did I already get and which one did I not get. I still ended up going to every single wisp location just to see if I got the one that was there. So. Don't be like that and just make sure that you do this one with zero wisps. And if you did already get some wisps, there's nothing you can do. You're just really going to have to check every location to find them. I'm sorry to tell you the bad news. All right, so let's get into the walkthrough. I'm showing you guys the ones here in Jubilee Village because there's very few of them and they're very easy to find. And we're just going to grab those while we talk here. Sorry, I didn't get a map of the Jubilee Village locations. I feel bad about that. I cleaned up my process for the rest of them because there are so many and you really do have to get a lot of wisps during this whole request. So what I did is I put a star in the location of every single wisp and as I completed the map, I got a star in the location of every single wisp. So when I show that map, you can be for certain that that is every single wisp in every single location because I recorded all 106 wisps. Remember, they give you that one for free in the beginning. So you're gonna be on a quest for 106 wisps. Six of those wisps are inside Jubilee Village and like I said, they're extremely easy to find now that means that there's 100 wisps in all of the other locations. It's quite a few wisps, so that's why I made the process that I made. When I get to a wisp, I put down a star in that location, so you can guarantee that every single wisp is on this video. Now, why am I being so particular about that? Because I actually got online to do a guide for this, and some of the online guides don't have all the wisps. No, I'm not even kidding you. No, I couldn't believe it when it happened to me. It was ridiculous. I spent over an hour going back and forth to all the locations and somebody in my live chat was like, Jono, you should try a different guide. I think the guide you're using is bad. So I went over to IGN. You guys know IGN. That's a fan favorite for all kinds of guides. I should have used them in the first place, but I didn't. And once I switched over to the IGN guide, I realized that the guide I was using was missing two wisps. And I'm going to call them out by name. It was Dexerto. 
So anyway, if you got the Dexterito one or you just are on any particular guide, I do recommend the IGN guide. I'll put the link down in the description. That's the one that I used to complete this video. I know some people don't want to go online and use a guide. It's just not the way they roll. That's why I made this video. Most people will search on YouTube and try to find the locations and just watch the video while they do it themselves. And that's exactly who I made this video for. That's why the video is so long and I just cut out some of the stuff where I legitimately got lost. All right, you guys, so we're just finishing up with the Jubilai Village Wisps, and you can see we've collected them all. Now we're ready to move on to our first location out in the field. Perfect timing because I was all out of things to talk about. Now let's see the map of all the Wisp locations. Everywhere you see a star, including my current location, there is a Wisp there, and it's exactly where the Wisp is. Now I'm sorry I couldn't zoom on every single location. I know that would be helpful, but once you get in the general area, you're going to be just fine. You should see the Wisp. The only thing that I should note is that the wisps are able to be seen from a much higher render distance when it is nighttime, so I recommend to do this at night. If you don't do it at night, you're just going to struggle a little bit, and you can see that I did Jubilee Village during the day, and you can't really see the wisp until you get right on top of it. I'm going to do a couple of these during the day as well, and you really can't see the wisp until you get right on top of it. And eventually I did switch to nighttime, and I recommend to switch to nighttime. It makes it so much easier. And some of these take so long that you'll go all the way through the night, and it'll be morning, and then you're looking for the wisps during the day. Again, well, go back and sleep until it's nighttime and continue continue during the nighttime because honestly you're going to waste so much time trying to find these things during the day when they're much easier to find during the night. So if you ever see any cuts or transitions during this video like the one you just saw, it means I got very lost, I wasted a ton of time and then I finally figured out where is the exact location. If that happens to you, I still recommend going over to the IGN guide because they do have little tips and clues for each and every wisp. It's only one clue, but in some cases that clue is actually what got me there. All right, everybody, so that's all I'm going to talk just for now. Once we get to the next area, I'll give you a couple of tips and clues that should make it easier for that area. I don't have any tips and clues for this area because there's nothing really special about it. There's no hidden wisps in the cave. There's no hidden wisps in any kind of uh, overworld cave or second area cave. You know, you can go inside some caves by pressing A. There's wisps inside there. You might find a wisp inside a temple later in the video, but this area doesn't have anything like that. They're all in the overworld and they're super easy to find. So just remember to set it to night and you should be able to follow along and catch all the wisps until we get to the next area. So I'll see you guys once we get there.
All right, you guys, so I'm back and you can see here, we just got the last wisp for this area and it will tell you you've collected all the wisps for this area. So you will definitely know when you're done with a particular area. Let's move on to the Crimson Mirelands. This is another easy area with no surprises. There's nothing underground, nothing inside of a cave, nothing in an extra area. And all of the wisps are located in the overworld, just on top of mountains or at the bottom of valleys, just like regular ones. They're also in some kind of interesting places and they'll take you here, there, and everywhere all over the map, so you should have no trouble finding them on this area. Just go ahead and use the guide and use this map right here. I'll come back on the next area because it's definitely going to get harder from here. That's why I did these areas sort of in order. They're the order that you actually encounter them in the game as you progress through the story.
All right, so we got the last wisp in the Crimson Mirelands, another easy area. And again, it says you've collected all the wisps in this area, meaning that you finished that area out. You wanna make sure that you see that before you leave any area. It's just the best practices. And once you get all these areas behind you, you can move on to the next one like we're doing here. We are at the Cobalt Coastlands. This is all of the wisps. It's another easy area. There's no wisps hidden inside caves or in tricky locations. They just send you everywhere on the map. The one good thing about doing this request is that you'll get every single location on the map unlocked. It's a really good way to clear out all of those foggy areas on your map that you've never explored before. And because of doing this request, I found some areas on the map that I literally would have never explored, stuff way out in the far corners or on the very edge. Cobalt Coastlands is a great example of that because there's some really interesting islands all over the map and you really wouldn't find them unless you just decided I'm going to fly all the way to the edge of the map today and see what's over there on that tiny little speck of an island on the map. So of course, most people won't do that. I never did that. So this was a really good request because some of the wisps are actually on those islands. So they force you to go out there and explore. And you might even find some alpha Pokemon and rare Pokemon out in those locations. So it's a pretty cool request in that regard. But again, there's nothing really too challenging about this area. The next two areas do have some hidden wisps that are a little bit hard to find, especially if you're just looking at a map online and not getting any clues. So what I'm gonna do is give you clues for the next areas on where the hidden wisps are and the ones that are not necessarily easy to identify just by looking at a map.
All right, so here is the last wisp in this area and we're ready to move on to the Coronet Highlands. This is a pretty tricky area for our next area. There are two hidden wisps here and I'll give you the clues right up front. They're not really clues. I'm going to tell you exactly where they are, okay? You see that big thing called the Ancient Quarry? That's an actual rock quarry that's underground. You have to go underneath there with Ingo at one point and there is a wisp inside there. If you're just looking at the map, You'll never find it. It's down inside the quarry. That's the kind of tricky part about it. You have to get to the quarry entrance or the quarry exit. I'll show you exactly where it is. Now the other one is the wisp that is inside the cave that's right by the waterfall and the bridge. It's a little bit hard to find. If you're just looking at the map, you'll never find it because it's inside the cave by the waterfall. It's the same cave that Ingo makes you walk through and he has to find all of the torches. There's a hidden place inside that cave over by the Alpha Crobat. Now, if you're not sure where the Alpha Crobat is, you may just have to look up the location or run through the cave until you find the Alpha Crobat, but the main clue for finding that wisp is it's right next to the Alpha Crobat. I have a special way that I run and you can only get there by hopping on top of one of those breakable crystals like the one you see right next to me here. You can stand on top of one of those and jump into an area of the cave, but showing where that is is really hard to do without just showing the entire route through the cave, which was a really, really long part of this video. So I cut all that out and I'm just going to have to tell you it's right next to the Alpha Crobat. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding it. Once you find Alpha Crobat, it's right over there, kind of tucked away inside of a cubby of a corner. The rest of them are on top of the map and it's not really too bad, so you shouldn't have too much trouble with this area. And I tried to give as best of clues as I can for the two that are legitimately hidden.
Okay, so here we are at the last wisp for the Coronet Highlands, and we'll move on to the final area, which is the Alabaster Icelands. I just want to say thanks if you really did make it this far, and if you're actually using this video to find all the wisps yourself, and go ahead and put any ice emoji in a comment down below if you really did watch this far. I truly appreciate that. Now, for this area, there's three tricky wisps that are hidden. One of them is hidden in an ice cave that is underground. Another one is hidden inside of the temple, and I'll tell you the clue to get that one. You basically want to go to the first door, the first puzzle door that you unlock. It's kind of tricky to explain, but it's the first door where you had to type in a code to get the door to open. You'll recognize it because there's a big open door and there's a whole bunch of Reggie statues nearby. After you go through that first door, turn to your left, and then you'll see the wisp in a little cubby that's tucked behind. They made that one pretty tricky so you actually would miss it and most people did miss it even if you grabbed it. You kind of still have to go to the location because you're like, did I grab that one? I don't know if I grabbed that one. So I made it pretty easy to show where that location is. I sped up the footage by 10 times so you don't have to watch me run through the whole thing because it really does take a mind-blowingly long time to run through there. However, I did show it on 10 times speed and you can just know yourself that it's right after the first puzzle door. Now there's another one, three hidden wisps in this area. They hit it inside of a cave. You can hit that cave with one of your Pokemon and it will blast open the cave. It's actually a pretty cool animation. It was one of my favorite things that they added into this game. Your Pokemon can just destroy real world objects that are on the map. That's awesome. And obviously I haven't done that in very many places in this game because this was my second game. I did find most of those places on my main account. In this case, there's a wisp hidden behind one of them. So you'll see later in the video, I throw my Pokemon at this rock and it breaks open the entrance of a cave and there's a wisp inside there. That's the third hidden wisp. So this area does require some tricky clues and you have them now. So hopefully that helps you get through this area as well.
All right, you guys, so we're finally at the last wisp. We got them all. If you're still wondering, do I have all the wisps? Remember, you can go look at the keystone and it will tell you how many you have. 107 is the correct number. You should have 107 when you're done. And once you're done, then you just have to go back to Jubilee Village and talk to Vess. Now I'll explain a couple of things about the end of this video. First off, we're gonna go complete the request. You're going to receive a ton of items from Vess. You may have already picked up some of these items, but I had not. I did the whole request in one go. So I'm gonna get every single reward, which you can see here in just a second. There's also a very long story portion of this, and you're gonna to talk to Vess, and he's gonna ask you some creepy questions. And none of the questions, it really matters what you answer. Nothing changes whatsoever. You can answer whatever you feel like, and it's not gonna have something different happen or any kind of alternate ending or something like that. Once you get through all the questions and all the story mode, Vest is going to basically give you a spirit tomb. Now that's the best part about this request. You get a guaranteed spirit tomb encounter and it's not very hard to catch it. And don't worry if you accidentally knock it out because it also unlocks the ability for spirit tomb and alpha spirit tomb to spawn in the game. Of course, Spiritomb is one of the Pokemon that you need to complete the Pokedex and eventually complete the story and catch Arceus, so you definitely can't skip doing this. So it's worth it to complete it and encourage your friends to complete it because obviously everybody wants to get Arceus and finish the game. Like I said earlier, this is the longest request in the entire game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm gonna leave you with one little tidbit of information before I let you watch the rest of the video. I'll explain what's gonna happen here. Basically, we're gonna go over and catch the spirit tomb it's a super easy encounter and then i'm gonna go back and forth from jubilee village to the location we're about to go which is where you catch spirit tomb for the first time it has a 0.8 percent chance to spawn it is extremely rare even though there are three different spawn points you will not find it very often it's extremely hard to shiny hunt as well but now you can get it in massive mass outbreaks due to the daybreak update. So there's an easier way to find it in mass outbreaks if you prefer to find it that way. So it's worth mentioning that in order to get Spiritomb in the game, you do have to complete this request and eventually you will need to complete this request in order to get Arceus and finish the game. So the last portion of this video is just me doing everything I mentioned just now. It's going to be going over to the area where Spirit Tomb spawns. You have to change it to nighttime. You have to talk to Vess. It's going to be a ton of story. Then there's going to be a Spirit Tomb spawn. And then once you go back and forth to Jubilee Village, you should see three more spawn points in front of the old Keystone statue. And they will spawn the potential for a spirit tomb. And that's pretty much it for this video, you guys. The rest of it is me doing all that stuff I just mentioned, so I don't wanna talk the whole thing. It's a very, very long video. I really didn't want it to be this long, but it just takes a really long time to complete this request, and that's the way that it has to be. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative, and I hope you guys come back for the rest of my request series. I'm doing a video on every single request in the game, one by one. And we're only up to 22 so far, so I've got a bunch of them left to do. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks again. Thanks to all my amazing subscribers. And peace.
Thank <laughs> you. 